Mahoyo has now created a multiverse that has 10 dimensions. Now this is going to be crazy to us as three-dimensional beings. But let me break it down to you of how it works and how Tears of Themis, Honkai Impact, Genshin Impact, and even Honkai Star Rail technically are all a part of the Mohoyo multiverse and actually tied in with one another. This video is helping break down string theory as well as M theory so that way you're able to create your own versions of what could possibly be potentials and theories within the games. What I will be doing is expressing these theories and also relating to them how they work in game. So based off of Mohoyo's own writing and how they have built their universes and their setups. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications. Also hit the like button, share the video to help it out and help support the channel. I love making videos like this and also expressing theories in general. So if you want to help my big brain and also help out me uh, with my little baby of a starting out channel, I'd be greatly appreciated. Anywho, let's get into it. Diving right into things, the first thing we're going to talk about is the zero dimension. Zero dimensions means that we have no length, no width, and no height, meaning there's no volume, but instead is a fixated point that has no indication of literally even length. There's no indicator, just a point. And though a point is very hard to understand because even for us, points have two-dimensional characteristics, this does not possess that. Now, let's talk about the first dimension. The first dimension is only having one plane, and that being length. Though it's hard for us to understand or conceptualize as we only see in 2D and 3D like I stated before, I like to use the example of the fixated dot for zero dimensions and a line for one dimension because it refers to length. This would mean that we now have two fixated dots and a line drawn between them. Now we head into the second dimension. This is where we see flat shapes, length and width, this having no substantial volume. We have to double our dots, which is our zero dimension fixated points, but we now double them again and we get this, which is a flat object. In relation to how we see two dimensional objects, we see them all the time drawn on paper and flat surfaces in general, thus that create no volume is a two dimensional object. Our perceptions of the world are based in only two dimensional and three dimensional. Now let's jump into three-dimensional. This is probably one of the easier concepts to understand because you and I are both three-dimensional objects. We both hold value and we both can understand con and conceptualize two-dimensional objects. Now this is where things get a little bit strange because in order to understand the later dimensions, you need to have an understanding of this fundamental going into that. So. Please keep this in mind throughout our time and our journey going to other dimensions. We as three-dimensional beings could understand two-dimensional, understand the concepts of one-dimensional and zero-dimensional, but we understand and conceptualize two-dimensional. This is essential to understand because when we hit fourth dimension, fourth dimension can understand third dimension and second dimension, but also understand itself in fourth. As three-dimensional beings, we are able to understand ourselves, understand the people around us and entities around us in three-dimensional, and understand two-dimensional, but we do not have the concept or capability of understanding and conceptualizing fourth dimension. This seems strange because of how time theory works and time travel works, but in relation to time travel, the only way that we really have it portrayed in our media is through the concept of how it would be perceived in the third dimension, not how it's actually perceived within the fourth dimension. Hypercubes are often used within the fourth dimension because we double our points again from our third dimension to our fourth dimension. Meaning that we now have an omnipresent cube where we can see so many more fixated points. Now, when we have this hypercube, we are now talking about one more plane. We have volume and now we have time. Time is what creates the fourth dimension. We are able in the fourth dimension to go backwards and forwards within time. Now this does provoke the question, if time moves forward for us in the third dimension, doesn't that mean that we could understand the fourth dimension? Or that we are even potentially living within a fourth dimension? That's correct actually, we are living within a fourth dimension, but we cannot understand or conceptualize it because we are in the third dimension. By in the third dimension, I mean we exist as third dimensional beings. Only a fourth dimensional being would be able to understand the, con the concept and visually see a fourth dimensional character or entity. Now, how do I explain this to you? 
is a hard question that I had to ask myself for about an hour and a half. I think the best way to explain it is how would a 2D character see us as 3D characters? If I, was, if I had a cartoon version of myself in a 2D world, how would they see the three-dimensional version of myself when I entered their world? We see this all the time when we have human characters, three-dimensional characters jump into a television of a cartoon world or join a cartoon world and become two-dimensional themselves. That's because in a two-dimensional plane or a two-dimensional conceptualization of those characters, they can only understand themselves. We become whatever that plane is so that it's adaptable and visually understanding and comprehensible to the to those that are within that realm or within that plane. This applies with the fourth dimension as well. Since we are only able to understand and comprehend the third dimension, if someone were to do a fourth dimensional movement, as in going backwards in time, we would not be able to see them going backwards. We would still only be able to see the forwards movement of time, which is why we are only able to understand three dimensional. Now there is a scientist within Honkai Impact named Auto Apocalypse. And the thing about Auto Apocalypse is he actually makes a distinction between the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension without actually talking about the fifth dimension. It's a very strange moment that was written in the visual novel that Mahoyo has created. And I would like to talk about it a bit further. But before we get to that point, I wanted to do a little bit of a too long didn't read of how the fourth dimension works. So that way it's not so, uh, not so scary. <laughs> I'm doing this unscripted because English is my third language and when I read from this paper, I have a really hard time talking. So uh, if I'm being unclear, I'm really sorry. Um, but let's try to clear it up a bit now. Beings that possess the trait of fourth of four dimensional are able to travel with the movement of the third three dimensional objects have the additional plane, which is time, allowing them to go backwards and forwards in time. But three dimensional beings such as ourselves can only move forwards in time, meaning that the plane isn't something we have full perception of. But if we are moving forwards in time, that does not mean that we are technically four-dimensional characters, but rather we are three-dimensional characters that live in a four-dimensional plane. Now, this is also tying into M-theory, because we have fixated points in relation to that as well. But, rather than talking about M-theory itself, let's stick to string theory, because it's a little bit more easy for us to conceptualize, and I don't want to go into M-theory right now. So, uh, since we have zero dimensions, being a fixated point being one, um, one line, and then we have uh, second dimension being with within length, third dimension being where we create volume, Fourth dimension being where time is now a factor in as well. We have our understanding and conceptualize of how we are able to talk about the fourth dimension. Now, how does the fifth dimension play a part? This is where we take a massive leap into parallel universes. Now, parallel universes is something that we talk about a lot within Honkai Impact and actually is where Genshin Impact will have a lot of correlation. My theory about how Genshin Impact is a part of the imaginary tree slash a parallel universe slash influenced by care by beings that have presence of uh, infinite forms such as the seventh dimension and even approaching tenth dimensional will be discussed in a different video for now i'm just trying to give you the base knowledge of how dimension and string theory works in relation to mahoyo's multiverse all right let's try our best to explain fifth dimensions without breaking any brains okay so when it comes to fifth dimensions we talked about fourth being time third being volume so on and so forth when it comes to the fifth dimension it's actually talking about parallel universes parallel universes um though they might be a little bit complex to understand let's say that we're adding double the fixated points to our uh, our last fourth dimensional view and now we're getting this sort of weird chasm of lines that might just not make sense at all. Let's make it make sense though. So in a parallel universe means that a point of decision creates a separate timeline. This is often portrayed in media and movies as well, where it's like the decision you make could change the way of the world. We see it time and time again in anything that we play, a decision that we make changing the sway of everything. But in the fifth dimension, that decision that we make becomes an anchor point. And now means there's stability in that one moment of decision making because we'll now branch off into either the decision to make it or the decision to not make it. Let's say we decide to buy tacos. To buy those tacos, we got to make our own timeline now. 
if we chose to not buy those tacos and save our money, that is now a separate timeline as well. Now, on the timeline where we bought them, we ate the tacos. On the timeline where we didn't buy them, we ended up eating a cheeseburger. In the fifth dimension, we are not able to jump from when we ate the taco over to when we ate the cheeseburger. Though we have the movement of time on our side, the only way for us to travel to be able to do both would be for us to eat the taco, travel back in time to the point of decision, then go through the time of the timeline of us not purchasing the taco and then arriving to us eating the cheeseburger. In this theory, that means we truly could never meet ourselves because we are now becoming the point and becoming the being that has entered into that timeline versus us being able to jump over and become that person instantaneously. If we were able to not be bound by that, by that one jarring, unable to jump from parallel universe fixated point to parallel universe fixated point, that means we would be a sixth dimensional being because we no longer have that constraint, meaning we double our fixated points yet again, meaning that time no longer is linear, that time no longer is just um, this sort of three-dimensional movement of us being able to go from point to point. We are now able to almost have a fourth-dimensional perception of time where we're able to jump from any fixated point or any time along parallel universes. And now we hit the seventh dimension. The seventh dimension is where things get a little bit easier to understand because they're so complicated <laughs> which sounds extremely redundant but the reason being is that the seventh dimension is talking about infinite forms of themselves right so it's basically like the infinity dimension um <laughs> including and having different origins of worlds themselves as well so for example in a parallel universe we were able to have a same point of origin that creates separate parallels, which means that at some point or another, they had the same origins. In the sixth dimension, all parallel universes are able to be jumped across in planes of time, which so it doesn't matter where we are within a parallel universe, we can jump to another. In the seventh dimension, that means that we have uh, the same capabilities of the fifth, sixth, whatever dimensions are prior to this one. But on top of all of that, we have the the origins of the world being different. So for example, if we had the imaginary tree in Honkai Impact or the Sea of Quanta having different origins to have them be created, we can now jump fluently between those without having any issue from any point in time, from any decision, doesn't matter what is the concept, the concept, we do not need to have parallel universes linked. We can just jump to whatever we want to. There could be a timeline where humans aren't even humans. Like for example, right? Let's say the Big Bang Theory created us, right? Which is a pretty common, a pretty common uh, theory that we all go through is we're taught in school even is the Big Bang Theory. What happens in a world where the Big Bang Theory was not what created us? That would be understanding the seventh dimension. Because all of the universes and worlds created without the Big Bang Theory, we could still jump to. Now we're going into the eighth dimension. Understanding the eighth dimension would be having all of the previous dimensions applied to them, but them also having sort of almost no physical form even because they're able to enter in and out of all these spaces continuously and have infinite power over which they can control and go through. Now we head to the ninth. The ninth dimension is what I believe to be where the Honkai God resides, slash the eighth. I'm not, pretty sh I'm not fully sure which one I truly believe in yet until I start to theorize stronger about the Honkai God themselves. Um, but the Honkai God we meet in Honkai Impact Thirds, uh, manga second eruption they have no physical form which they t identified and take the shape of whatever you are before them thus becoming a three-dimensional object to sirin and otto when they meet them the honkai god is able to see all possible universes and is able to manipulate those based on what they have within their own power thus infecting all parallel universes with Honkai. The reason I believe that the 10th dimension exists within Honkai Impact and within Genshin Impact and so on and so forth 
because in the Honkai manga, which is canon to Honkai Impact 3rd, we have a being that speaks to Sue at the end, saying, I applaud you for finding this place, enlightened one. You seek the universal truth that governs even the Honkai itself, meaning it is the power over even the Honkai itself. And in this image that we see, the universe takes place on literally a Mahjong board, which means that all universes, everything, the bubbles, everything that we've done in this game is in and of itself playing pieces on God's board. Which brings us back to the main theory I have for Genshin, where we are all being, that we are going to use the Gnosis to play a game versus God. Where each time we are in these timelines, all of these failed timelines we go through, all these fights against the Honkai, are different versions rather than Gnosis having gems in Honkai. Things like that, all being pieces in a board to play games with God. And that's why when our characters are hurt or upset, they're like, what sick game are you playing? Where they question things like that. Is that it's all coming back in and of itself. I think that's what Hoyo is actually trying to accomplish here. Is understanding that life itself will always be a game to somebody higher than yourself. Which is a sickening concept. But probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen a game company do when it comes to them. Which is why I'm so in love with the Mahoya multiverse. Because it is so messed up that it becomes so cool. And um, that basically ends the video. Um, if you're wondering what the like 11th like string is. Basically, me, it's like brains. So basically, you have like strings, like physical strings. Let's, like, let's imagine a physical string. It has brains. It has like different like little twines um, in and of itself that create atoms. And within atoms, that's where we see uh, 11th, the 11th dimension. But that's not really necessary to understand what we're talking about here when it comes to Mohoyo and game theory of the dimension theory. I hope this made sense to you. If there's parts where it feels unclear um, or you wish you had more divulged upon, let me know in the comments below. If there's parts that you found really interesting, let me know too. Um, I will be doing another video that's a follow-up video using my own theories in relation to this base knowledge that I gave you about what I think Genshin Impact, Honkai Impact, Honkai Star Rail, and Tears of Themis in the Mohoyo multiverse actually plays a part in. So I hope this gives you enough base knowledge and understanding Mahoyo's version of how dimensions work to create your own theories. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to catch you guys in the next video. And uh, I really hope you guys hit the subscribe button and hang around the channel for more. Um, catch you guys later. Bye.